Tony's not so bad. He helped us out over here. Yep, yep. All right. Let's get it on. Now, uh, there's a couple of things that you could do here. There's an inn in here if you need it. Uh, I think this is the inn anyway. Yeah, this is the end. Okay. Really pretty woman. Hmm. Yeah, it was Marlock. Let's see, this guy I think is yeah, just a regular old merchant doesn't sell anything useful. And you are a weapon shop that sells the same stuff as Sinesta, I do believe. All right, yes, that is correct. In case you don't know what the causeway is, it's this giant space time distortion that Fulu made uh, during the start of the war. Yeah. No, I don't. Well, I do. And it is... Like I said, it's a big, giant space-time... Thingy. And we got to go to the top to use it without permission. Uh, there are random battles in here. You can fight uh, gong heads and I think armors and toxic flies. So you can pretty much fight uh, everything that you fought in the dream world. I like this song. Going kind of easy on me with the random battles. There are treasure chests in some of these side rooms. Okay, what do we got here? Three gong heads. I know how to take care of these. Fire wind up in this biznatch. Come on, one more time. Shit.
Ah, it doesn't hurt nearly as much now that I'm like six levels higher. Five levels higher, something like that. I should have stayed at the end while I was down there, but I didn't, did I? Huh. Oh well. That's what? Restoring lost HP is what these apples are for. Let's see, I don't think there's anything in any of these, actually. Yeah. They're all empty except for the herbs. You're gonna have to forgive me for being as quiet as I am. I am feeling kind of under the weather. And I'm really tired. I just got off of work. And bleh. It's one time at Bandit Camp. I got killed with a dude with a sword. And punched in the face and hit with a giant baseball bat. What do you know? I actually won a moon sword. Look at that. That's actually a good. You know what? That's actually really good. I can demonstrate that this, even though the moon sword. Look, okay, look at the power difference. 13, two hits. 28, one hit. Watch. I've actually never won a moon sword from one of those guys. Huh. Okay, now I just gotta get into another fight. And I'll demonstrate the power of the two hit weapons. All right. Oh, thank you for filching. That's exactly what I needed you to do. When you filch, uh, you actually uh, do less damage. So, yeah. What were you trying to filch, anyway? Okay, we'll just do this. Okay, I did one hit for 300 damage, right? Uh, hmm. Actually, you know what? I might end up doing more damage with the moon sword at this level because I am kind of lower level than I should be at this point and by the way that is a uh, elevator you can take it back down if you want uh, there's nothing if you do so yeah I need a bit of a stronger enemy to demonstrate I think General rule of thumb, though, the uh, two-hit weapons are always better than the one-hit weapons. Now, obviously, uh, for example, if you were going to go from a Scaramax to, say, a Goo King Sword, that would not hold true. Uh, but... This is something I always wondered. Uh, who opened the causeway here? Is it did it open because it sensed people? Is did it open because it sensed Ryu? Uh, did it open because somebody was about to use it? They never really say. We just kind of we get up here and the damn thing opens. Oh, wait, before we do, uh, I'm guessing you can probably guess what's coming up here.
Yes, it's this tool again. How did he know we were even up here? We're gonna borrow it for a bit. Well, that was the plan. You know who Rasso reminds me of? Uh, like looks wise, Dragon Quarter, Bosch. He looks just like Bosch. You know, they uh, kind of go off like Rosso is like super powerful, but you never actually fight him directly. But anyway, it's round two against yeah, uh, Rosso and his warrior spirits. This is Yimchaf. Let's see. Want to do? Oh, do molasses. Wild shot and wild swing. Yeah, I didn't expect that to hit. Wanted to throw him off balance. I want to see. I want to check the sword out here. Okay, 600. And I, I think, actually, for... Uh, to throw him off balance, I think the combos actually have to be of a certain length. Okay, so that was 600 damage. Let's go back to the Scramasax. Okay, you can see about what I meant. I just did a little more damage there. And by doing this method here, you can pretty much keep him from ever attacking you. Uh, this is pretty much my uh, preferred method of killing Yamchaf. Basically, I'm doing it this way because if... Okay, if I were if I had Ryu come in with the uh, the combo after the combo was done, he'd just turn back around from taking the increased damage. Whereas if I do a regular attack with Ryu, I could get a good 600 points of damage in on him, and then do wild shot and wild swing and throw him off balance again. And by doing this, he never gets to attack. But this also is pretty good because it let me demonstrate the fact that the uh, the Scramasax is at least equal, if not a little superior, to the Moon Sword. Obviously, it depends a little bit on the enemy's defense as well. Uh, if an enemy has super high defense, uh, honestly, uh, one really good hit typically does more damage than two weaker hits. But uh, for the most part, you want to stick to the two hit weapons. And 
and this guy will never, ever lay a hit on you if you do it just like I'm doing now. It doesn't necessarily have to be Wild Shot and Wild Swing. I'm just doing those two because they don't have any uh, AP cost. And this tactic out here, right, right here, I actually figured it out on my own uh, by accident. And as you can see there, I took absolutely zero points of damage from him. Get a free ice punch, which we already have one. <laughs> 